What's going on, folks? Thanks for hitting that download button and checking out a brand new episode of Toys and Tech of the Trade, your one-stop shop for toys, tech, and talk with some assembly required. I'm your host, Rich, and I appreciate you taking the time to check out this week's episode. Usually I go and I do the whole shtick and I want to try and jump into the content a little quicker than the usual. Obviously, at this point with 75 or so episodes, we've kind of hit our stride. So at this point, obviously, you can go back, learn a little bit about what we do. But I want to jump into the episode and also update you folks on what's been going on. Obviously, after my last episode where I updated you folks on what's going on, a lot of you reached out had a lot of questions about how I'm doing, how things are going, and it's been a it's been an interesting time and I kind of had to take a forced hiatus just because a new job and my daughter starting school and family stuff just trying to make everything run smoothly, but now as we start getting into the fall, there's a lot of things that have changed and I am coming out of my self-imposed exile to ensure that I can get back on the content train, and I think I'm in a better headspace now to do that. But uh, the reason I'm recording this episode instead of releasing some of the other ones we had was because I wanted to actually talk about an event that we held two weeks ago. It was the first organized event that the Rageworks brand did. We partnered up with the Black Podcasters Association and also with Spotlight Podcasting, and the Asian American Podcasters Association and NYC Podcasters to put on our first event in the Queens, New York area. And the thing about it was that when we went into this, we wanted to try and do something to serve areas outside of New York City, which if you're not a native New Yorker, New York City usually encompasses the borough of Manhattan. And the thing about it is that New York City has five boroughs, and each borough has its own diverse amount of creators, but a lot of the stuff that happens relating to podcasting usually happens in Manhattan, aka the city. And a lot of people that are outside of that area and don't want to either commute into the city or just don't want to deal with the current climate of the city, they either opt out of those events or they miss out on an opportunity to connect with different vendors, podcasters, and people in the space. And as such, myself, Corey from the BPA, and Lee from NYC Podcasters and the PI, we decided to put together an event to really help out the different communities that are outside of Manhattan. And we put it together, it took some time, and on August 16th, we launched the first event we held it at an event here in in Queens at a restaurant, and we did it a little differently because we had it more in a relaxed setting. We had a nice meal. Each of us did some presentations. And more importantly, we got to connect with podcasters that wanted to make the commute out to Queens and just wanted to see other areas of New York City. And I got to be honest, it was it was a great event. It was intimate. We had a nice turnout of people ask questions. We had a lot of great presentations. And more importantly, we started building a community event space outside of Manhattan. As I said, Queens being one of the first boroughs, we plan on going into Brooklyn and probably doing something in Long Island, which is not a borough of New York City, but practically is given its proximity to Queens. And I think that by doing this, we want to try and get a couple of events under our belt to put together something bigger in 2024. Now, the thing about it is that organizing events, it's it was strenuous for different reasons. First and foremost, obviously, finding a venue, finding a place that served food that everybody could enjoy, and of course, getting people to attend the event. It's the summertime. A lot of people went away. You had school that was out. You had summer camp that was going on. And it was just right in the thick of it, so to speak. Plus, obviously, people were preparing for podcast movement. So we had a lot of different factors that definitely impacted the turnout a bit. But the thing about it was that for a first time event, it went better than I expected. Just because, like I said, we were able to sit down and 
break bread with podcasters and talk about what we do, what we offer. And the important thing for me was that it continued to strengthen other skills. Obviously, even though I've been podcasting for 10 plus years, 15 plus years at this point, the thing about it is that it's very easy to press record and turn on a microphone and record with nobody around you. You don't have to worry about the mood of the room, ex external factors. You just hit record and you're off to the races. But the thing about it is that by presenting in front of people and sharing your knowledge on a on a personal basis, it allows you, I think, to just connect with people better. Sure, all of you listen to the podcast and you can email or DM or whatever, but the thing about presenting in person and being able to talk and really just exchange ideas face to face, I, it's an art form that with the pandemic and everything else, a lot of people missed. And as events continue to come back gradually, I think we're going to see more and more events pop up. And the thing about it was that when we put this together, we said, look, we want to go into this and we want to create something unique, different, and more importantly, native to each of these boroughs that we're in. Because I think that, like I said, the Queens area, there's a lot of, I can name at least 10 podcasters, 20 at this point that are in the Queens area that people would be well served, would be well served to connect with. I can name right off the back of the GFQ network run by my good friend, Andrew Zarian. The name says it all, Guys from Queens. That was the original name of the network and the GFQ network, a staple here in the New York City area. Andrew and his team, they've been around for a long time. They do audio, they do video. And again, I know him and a few other people do from his work on his wrestling podcast, but still, Queens person. And like I said, myself, Jay Santee, also from Queens, Corey from the BPA, also from Queens, just a lot of creators are out here, and the thing about it is just some of them don't even know that the others exist. So I thought that was just such a really cool thing to do. With regards to our expansion into Long Island, uh, same thing. The Long Island area, for me, it's literally, I can walk up, and it's a, te a five, ten minute walk, and I am over the border in Long Island. And the thing about it is there's a lot of Long Island-based podcasters that just don't, people just don't know about, meaning that they don't know the shows they do, the services they offer. And while they're known, obviously, for their shows on Apple Podcasts or Google or Spotify, etc., there's no network or camaraderie that's established in those surrounding areas. I mean, I myself met people at this event and I said, hey, I run this network, we do production, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they were like, wow, it's cool that there was somebody right here in my backyard that does all these services and we had some great connections. And more importantly, it was just, again, just an, another resource available to podcasters in the area, which leads me to the next thing I wanted to talk about. And it's the fact that obviously organizing an event is cool. And if you have the opportunity to do so, do it. But attending events like this is where I really wanted to kind of focus the conversation because obviously podcast movement, so many of these events, and you say to yourself, ah, why should I go? Do I need to go? I don't think I need to go, et cetera. And you talk yourself out of it. But if there's anything I've learned in this crazy journey is that iron sharpens iron. Surrounding yourself with people that are just as passionate about a subject matter as you are and are into something as much as you are, it just creates a different wavelength of creativity. It just strengthens and pushes you to do more cool stuff. I sat down with a few people and I heard about their shows and how they work and their processes. And I was just blown away because here I think at 15 years in the game, I've kind of got it figured out, but other people come along and they talk about their workflows, how they rely on AI tools, services, etc. And it's just insane. Just when you think you've figured it out, you haven't. And it's funny because a lot of times, and I've heard this expression often, it's like, if you're the smartest person in the room, find another room. And I definitely had my find another room moment with this podcast event. If you have an opportunity to attend an event in your city or your neighborhood or your town, do so. Because like I said, there's just 
a wealth of people that are out there that are just untapped. You might find your next producer, your next business partner, your next audio editor, whatever it may be, your next best friend, your next co-host by attending these events. And I think that just doing these events has strengthened my desire to, number one, continue doing them, but to also do more public speaking. Just because, like I said, even though I speak behind the microphone, it's right now I'm recording this at about two o'clock in the morning and my house is perfectly quiet. And again, just no one here. But when it goes out into the void, it will be consumed by many of you. And obviously it'll connect with you that way. But again, if you have an opportunity, definitely feel, do your best to try and check out local events. Of course, if you can make it to events like Podcast Movement or some of these other events, do that as well because the benefits from it are massive. I'm one person that I can tell you in true in total honesty that in the 15 years I've done it, I have never gone to Podcast Movement and I should. It's on my bucket list alongside some other events. I definitely want to cover CES and that's more for the Rageworks website side of things, but those are events that are on my bucket list because I know that the experiences that come out of those events, you cannot put a price tag on. So do yourselves a favor. If you can check out events in your area, connect with fellow creators, whether you're a podcaster or just an entrepreneur, find other people, find the tribe that is just as good at what you are or hell, maybe even better and exchange ideas, learn new things, because I think a lot of times as an entrepreneur, whether it's podcasting or a t-shirt business or anything else, it's difficult sometimes for people to be, to share those passions. I mean, I can talk to people that I consider close friends and I'll talk about audio editing and all of this stuff. And while there is an interest, it's not like if I'm talking to, let's say, Corey or Lee, and we're talking about, hey, I use this new editing software, or hey, I use this AI to help with captions, etc. There's just a different level of enthusiasm that comes from that versus talking to your Aunt Sally and saying, hey, Aunt Sally, I recorded this podcast. She might not even know what the hell that is. And these are the kind of things, like I said, that events like this, like what we put on and like exist in in areas all over the country or and all over the world for that matter are there for so do yourselves a favor find local events talk to people that are in your niche and if you can't make it to an event just the internet's a vast place there's plenty of podcasting groups on facebook i've started to join a couple of different slack groups i joined a really good discord group as well for that same reason just to talk about podcasting to talk about services and ideas I've been using Cast Magic lately. It's a transcription and AI based software that I picked up through AppSumo. And Cast Magic has been really impressive when it comes to workflow. I thought I had it figured out using Descript, which I've started to rely on quite a bit to do edits. And Cast Magic, again, they have their own community, which happens to be on Slack. And Greg from Cast Magic invited me to join. And same thing, just in that week that I was in there, that first week that I was in the Slack group, I was introduced to three or four fellow New Yorkers. One of them was in the Bronx. Uh, one of them had a podcast network, just like I do. And they were like, hey, man, we should set up a call and talk about what we're working on and see if there is potential for collaboration. And that's the kind of stuff that joining these communities does. I mean, yeah, sure. A lot of these communities have people go in there and spam and shill their stuff. And there's always going to be that, but buried beneath that there's gems. There's good people that want to help you, that want to help you succeed. And you know, what's funny during the pandemic, a lot of other services popped up, a lot of networking services popped up and they were great. But again, even though they're not as prevalent now, it's the same thing. Like that community that they foster, just you can't ignore that stuff. And I was a person that I was heavy into like Clubhouse and different podcasting rooms on, on Clubhouse. And the same thing happened. People that I met through Clubhouse, I've worked with, I've collaborated with, I've been on their podcasts, which is crazy. And Instagram, 
Facebook, same thing. Like there's people that I've met through Instagram that I've been on their podcast. They've been on mine. They work with us on the network. I mean, Fight Insight, which is part of the Rageworks podcast network. I met the host of that podcast through a different networking group and he's out of Canada. Big shout out to Tim in Canada for Fight Insight podcast. He's in Canada. We've never met ever, but Tim, I consider him a great colleague a great collaborator, just an awesome human being. And again, all because, as a matter of fact, I think I spoke on a virtual event and Tim was there and we were part of the same group. And that's what led us to working together and us having the Fight Insight podcast on the Rageworks podcast network. So there's a tremendous amount of value in attending these events and joining these communities. So do yourselves a favor and join one if you can. I know that we started a Discord a while back for Rageworks and we actually have created channels for each of the podcasts. And I got to tell you, I've dropped the ball on Discord and a few other things, but starting to wrap my head around the stuff again and get back on the horse. But I wanted to hit record real quick, update you guys on what was going on, the event that we did, and also to let you know that we have other events on the horizon. And before we wrap up, I've mentioned very frequently that what we do with the Rageworks Podcast Network, we want to take that to the real world, so to speak, to a brick and mortar uh, model where we would have equipment in a space. People could come and record. We would edit, produce all the fun stuff that goes into what we do on the Rageworks Podcast Network, on the Rageworks Podcast Network, excuse me. And uh, I'm pleased to say that we are closer than we have ever been to making that a reality. And the thing about it is like right now, obviously I am, I still work. I work like everybody else, a nine to five, but we are working on the studio space and hopefully within the next three to six months, when we do an episode, we can say, Hey, we have a studio space open. If you're in the New York area or visiting New York and want a place to record, come and pay us a visit. So hopefully I'll have an update for that in the coming weeks. I'm going to include links in the show notes for the Black Podcasters Association as well as the Asian American Podcasters Association or AP. I said API before, but there are people that cater to API creators, which for those of you that aren't familiar with what that means, that is Asian American Pacific Islander. So if you ever see API, that is what it's referring to. But yeah, I will include links for that. Also, Jonathan Bailey Strong from Spotlight Podcasting, who did a great presentation on AI. He also does production and a bunch of other comprehensive services, and we will link to that as well in the show notes for this episode. When we drop our next episode, we'll be returning to having some guests. We're going to talk some product reviews. We're going to make a couple of tweaks to Toys and Tech of the Trade, but everything that we've that's made us, that you guys have enjoyed, the toys, the tech, all of that stuff will continue to be the driving force of the podcast. So thank you guys for giving me your attention for the last 20 or so minutes. As always, you can find everything we do on Rageworks, whether it's on rageworks.net or on the rageworkspodcastnetwork.com. And of course, you can always look for Rageworks on social media as well. And if you want to work with us, you can email me rich at rageworks.net. And if you're on LinkedIn, you can find me there as well. Thank you guys for listening and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.
Toys and Tech of the Trade is part of the RageWorks Podcast Network, your source for rants about gaming, entertainment, and the works. Visit us at RageWorksNetwork.com.